to go. Good. Yeah. Well, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for coming this morning. Uh, as you know, the Honourable Tom Bathurst is conducting a review into the 2003 convictions of Kathleen Folby. Those hearings have now been completed and submissions have been given to Mr Bathurst. He's now preparing his final report. Last Tuesday I received a phone call from Mr Bathurst who indicated to me that he was making substantial progress with the drafting of his report but that he had come to a firm view about what the outcome of his report would be. He asked me if uh, I would find it uh, useful uh, or if it would assist for him to send me in advance of his report his preliminary findings. I told him that I would find that very useful indeed and that would assist us all greatly. And so on Friday afternoon I received a memorandum from Mr Bathurst which uh, will be published with the uh, press release uh, during this press conference so you don't all have to go looking for it. Um, he provided me with this memorandum which uh, contains what he refers to as his summary reasons. Those reasons, that memorandum is very clear. I won't read all of it to you now, but I will read uh, the, the relevant and salient sections. Mr Bathurst says, since the conclusion of oral submissions, I have been reviewing the extent extensive submissions of the parties and the evidence with a view to completing my report. Because of the extent of the submissions and the volumes of evidence, it will take some time for the report to be finalised. Nevertheless, I have reached a firm view as to the result of the inquiry. As discussed with you, in the particular circumstances of the case, I felt it appropriate to notify you of that view prior to the delivery of my report to the Governor pursuant to Section 82 of the Crimes Appeal and Review Act 2001. My task is this is him continuing. My task is to consider the evidence at the trial and the conduct of the trial in light of the further evidence received at the inquiry to determine whether overall there is a reasonable doubt as to Ms Falbig's guilt of the manslaughter of her child Caleb, the infliction of grievous bodily harm on her child Patrick and the murder of her children Patrick, Sarah and Laura. I have reached the view that there is reasonable doubt as to the guilt of Ms Folby for each of those offences. Set out below is a summary of the basis on which I've reached that conclusion. My detailed reasons for each of the matters referred to will of course be contained in my report to the Governor and his concluding paragraph says, for these reasons I'm firmly of the view that there is reasonable doubt as to Ms Folby's guilt, although this is not a report pursuant to Section 82 of the Crimes Appeal and Review Act 2001 New South Wales, I have no objection to this memorandum, that this memorandum be either published or that the Attorney General make use of it in such matter as he sees fit. And so, as you would expect, over the weekend I sought the appropriate advice and weighed up the options available to me very carefully, um, realising, of course, that the decision as what, uh, in relation to what to do with Mr. Mr Bathurst's preliminary findings is a matter for me and me alone. And so I weighed up those options very carefully. And so considering Mr Bathurst's conclusion that he is firmly of the view that there is reasonable doubt as to Ms Folby's guilt, I consider that his reasons establish exceptional circumstances of the kind that weigh heavily in favour of the grant of a free pardon and that in the interest of justice, Ms Folby should be released from custody as soon as possible. And so, uh, this morning at 9.30 I met with the Governor. I recommended that the Governor should exercise the raw prerogative of mercy and grant Ms Folby an unconditional pardon. The Governor agreed. Ms Folby has now been pardoned. So, uh, I would like to also uh, say that we also took the opportunity, as you would expect us to, to make sure that Ms Folbig was released without delay, so I, I spoke to uh, Analak Chantavong, the Minister for Corrections, last night. Uh, we, I had my department uh, talk to the uh, Commissioner for Corrections, Kevin Corcoran. I wrote to him this morning notifying him of the pardon. Um, 
ensuring that Ms Folvig would find out about uh, the pardon in advance of, uh, of anyone else, even the media, um, to ensure that there was appropriate support around her um, when, she, we, when she was told of that, and for arrangements to be made to release her from prison without delay. I've also notified her lawyers. Also had a conversation with, uh, with Craig Folvig to let him know in advance, and I'm thinking of him today as well. It will be a tough day for him. Um, I wish to thank the former Attorney General, uh, Mark Speakman, for uh, initiating this report in, um, in response to a number of petitions that uh, were, were uh, received from her lawyers. Thank the Governor for her prompt response this morning, and also, of course, Tom Bathurst. We're very fortunate in New South Wales to have um, people of the calibre of Mr Bathurst, uh, an eminent a jurist, to conduct these sorts of inquiries. I am grateful as well, and I think all citizens should be, that the review provisions are available in New South Wales to ensure that where circumstances arise like these ones, justice can be ultimately done, even if it takes a long time. This has been a terrible ordeal uh, for everyone concerned, and I hope that uh, our actions today um, could put some closure on this 20-year-old matter. Happy to uh, answer any questions. Did you, from your staff today, receive any word on her reaction when she was told that? No, I haven't. I haven't. What, what I've done is to leave it to the uh, support staff at, uh, at Clarence Correctional Centre to look after her. Um, they are doing that. And can I just say, I think we all have to um, put ourselves in Ms Folvig's shoes and let her now have the space that she needs to get on with her life and not to har harass her or pursue her in any way. There's been a 20 year long ordeal for her. Um, if she's not out already, she will be soon and wish her well for the rest of her life. Actually, her on, the on the question of compensation, I mean, given the comprehensive findings about this, is she going to be compensated for her so we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. So Mr Bathurst will uh, complete his findings. One of the options that would be open to him, if he thought fit, would be to refer uh, to the Court of Criminal Appeal uh, the question of whether her conviction should be quashed. Um, that's a matter for him. That's a discussion for another day. Uh, if that was to happen, um, it would be open to Ms Folbig uh, to, um, to initiate civil proceedings against the State of New South Wales for compensation. Um, the only other avenue for compensation or, or, or the like would be for her to make an application to the governor, to the, to the government for an ex gratia payment. But again, that's getting well in ahead, of, in it, that's getting well in advance of today's story. So just confirming an unconditional pardon doesn't mean that the convictions No, the are convictions are not quashed. The only um, body that can do that is the Court of Criminal Appeal. What the, the effect of of a pardon is that she will not have to serve the rest of her sentence. Does, uh, you said just now that uh, New South Wales should be grateful for its review system. However, the inadequacies of this case over a long period have led academics in New South Wales to call for a judicial commission to be established in Australia should one be established. I think uh, we have to have a look at this case and all of the material that's been put before Mr Bathurst all that's gone before us now to learn from it and to amend the law, if needs be, so to make sure. To that. Of course, I'm open to that. Uh, but but my, what I meant um, in, when I, with those earlier comments, was that in this jurisdiction, there, ex there exist provisions for citizens and their supporters to keep pursuing the questions of convictions long after they may have been made, so that avenues arise, like was in this case so that justice could ultimately be done. Can you expect Mr Bathurst to finalise that report? That's a matter for him. Without giving away any confidences, I think it would be appropriate to say that it will be weeks and not months. Craig Folby, how was he when you spoke with him? Um, look, that's a private conversation. Um, but well, I had a lovely conversation with him today. I've not met him before, but uh, he was a good man. Do you have anything to say um, about the treatment of, in light of this decision, about the treatment I think it's important to objectively examine what has happened here. We've had a woman who was convicted in 2003 before a jury, um, 
who's been to a, a, a review by Reg Blanche, who was a former Chief of the District Court, who said that the convictions should have been upheld. It's been to, uh, on, uh, on appeal once. The court uh, unanimously viewed that those convictions should stand. So what's the difference today between today and what's transpired in the past is that new evidence has come to light. Um, and uh, it's appropriate that we do have mechanisms to reconsider these sorts of questions in light of new evidence. So what do I say um, in, in relation to all that? I think I've, I've made my comments pretty clear about that I mean, this morning. What's your interpretation? Do you think oh, that's not for me to determine. The, the, the legal system in New South Wales doesn't make findings of innocence. Um, there's, a, there's an onus on the prosecutors in criminal matters, which is the state, to prove um, guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, and if they reach that threshold, a person is convicted, and if they don't, they're, they're found not guilty. So that's how this works. This pardon doesn't equal innocence? No, what, what it does is to put into effect a finding by Mr Bathurst that reasonable doubt exists now in relation to all of her 2003 convictions. What do you say to all of the people out there that will not uh, have a reasonable doubt that uh, looking at today's results and looking at four children dead, what, do you, what message do you send to them, the people that will be out there in the community that simply do not believe the results of uh, Mr Baptist's story? Um, it's human nature to, to form a view and to, and, to, and to make your own mind up based on what you know of any circumstance to, to, to form a view. But the evidence that's been put before Mr Bathurst was voluminous. No ordinary citizens have that sort of volume of information or detail before them. So we just have to trust that the law did its job, that we had an eminent judicial officer in charge who reviewed that evidence and has come to a conclusion. There will be some people who have strong views. There's nothing I can do to disavow them of those views, nor do I, it's not my role to do that. We have to trust that the legal system in New South Wales is robust, that the rule of law <coughs> is always obeyed and adhered to, and that was my dispassionate role as Attorney General. But I have to say, you know, we've got um, four little bubbers who are dead. We've got a husband and wife who lost each other. Uh, a woman who spent 20 years in jail and a family that never had a chance. So you'd, you'd not be human if you didn't feel something about that, wouldn't you? You just referred to new evidence, but of course the inquiry wasn't just about new evidence. There was plenty of evidence that was revisited. There was new evidence on the diaries, but not coming from new science. So what does that tell you about the time that it took to reach this decision 20 years? I think all I can do is say that we need to wait until Mr Bathurst hands down his final findings, until we start to examine those sorts of things in detail. What's your understanding of Ms Bobby's release? Will the state be providing any sort of support in terms of accommodation and that transition? Well, from media reports I've seen that she's got a group of uh, strong and determined and loyal friends who will be looking after her, and that's really all I know. So no role for the state in that? Uh, well, uh, the Minister for Correction, uh, the, 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 the the governor of the jail at, at, uh, at the Clarence Correctional Centre <coughs> is making sure that she got all the support that she needed today, um, and I'm sure that's the case. When you say you took advice from the what advice did you say that you to the uh, I took advice from, uh, from the Crown solicitors. And who, who else did you speak to? Um, well, that, that I took advice from the Crown solicitors and <coughs> spoke to the legal officers within my department. You've used the word justice. Well, well, let's wait and see what happens if we're getting... That's, that's a question for another day. Do you think that the judicial, judicial system is particularly harsh and possibly unreasonable on women, specifically mothers, accused of harming their children? Mm. Obviously, the, there's the case of Linda Chamberlain, but also we saw Kelly Lane convicted for the murder of her baby and the body's never been found. Yeah, look, I don't think it would be helpful for me to go into that, those, those issues today. <laughs> OK. Thank you. Great, thank you.